Good afternoon, dear colleagues. In uh, 15 years of its history, Crossphoto uh, managed to build a big collection containing individual prints. And uh, we have uh, more than 30,000 units um, stored in our collection. One of the most valuable collections is the collection of early British photography. So, Ross Photo began uh, gathering this uh, collection back in uh, 2011 when Ross Photo got the panoramic view of Sevastopol by one of the pioneers of English and military photography, uh, James Robertson. So, the photo was uh, taken back in September 1855 after the fall of Sevastopol in the Crimean War. So, this is an uh, albumin print on salt paper. Uh, it consists of three parts and demonstrates the view on Armenian church, uh, Nikolaevsky fort, Fort Constantine, and the harbor of uh, Sevastopol. Um, so, this early British photography collection includes 253 uh, single prints, so they date back to late 1830s, uh, 1870s. So mainly uh, these photos uh, feature two techniques, uh, color types and uh, wet uh, collodion process on albumine paper uh, from wet uh, collodion uh, negatives. So the collection features 14 works, including two photogenic uh, images by the father of the modern photography, Sir William uh, Gary Fox Talbot. No, not, not this one, sorry. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to the opposite direction. And uh, the collection of uh, color types uh, by authors who were friends and relatives uh, of John Dilbin Lelevin, including her sister uh, Mary Dilwyn, uh, uh, the first uh, um, a female photographer in Wales. Her daughter, uh, Mary Dilwyn Levelin, and also Mervyn Herbert Neville, sorry, masculine, and also the uncle of Levelin, photographer Richard Dykes Alexander. And we should specifically mention nine works of one of the most remarkable Scottish uh, uh, color typists, uh, David Octavius Hill and also Robert Adamson. So their works show uh, are an example of a professional cooperation between an artist and a photographer. So these selections uh, reflect some uh, or portraits and landscapes and uh, uh, urban architecture. We would like to mention Nicholas uh, Henneman among photographers and color typists. Uh, his works are also part of the collection. So, Nicholas Henneman uh, assisted uh, William. Uh, Henry Fox Talbot for many years, and also those of Reverend Calvert Jones, and uh, those by L. Lanskypist Hugh Owen, and his assistant uh, John Beaven Hazard. Also, the collection includes individual uh, prints by renowned color typists uh, William Sherlock, Oscar Ragelander, Francis Bedford, and some other authors. So the subsequent period in technology development in British and world photography after the arrival of the wet 
collodion process in 1851 is represented by two works by the inventor of this uh, photographic technique, Mr. Frederick Scott Arsham. Also, uh, a great example of using wet colloidal process is uh, works of British lawyer and photographer Sir Roger Fenton. Uh, out of uh, 15 works of Fenton featured in the collections, 11 belong to the Crimean campaign. So he was the official uh, photo correspondent uh, who took pictures of everyday life scenes from the arms uh, of the Allies. Uh, among the masters who used the wet collodion technique uh, found in the collection are works of the artist and photographer Philip Henry Delamont. Uh, so uh, the collection contains two prints from the Yorkshire Abbey's uh, series and also uh, among authors in the collections are the portrait artists uh, Colin Smith and officer and traveler Linus Stripe. So the, also the album contains uh, 38 prints in the wet collodion technique. It contains uh, views and historical sites and monuments of Scotland. So such albums uh, were widely popular in the second half of the 19th century among the upper and the middle class of the Great Britain. So the main author of the uh, album was uh, James uh, Valentine, who, who focused on panoramic views. Uh, he took uh, pictures for albums and uh, uh, postcards, including those published from 1850 by his own printing company, Valentine and uh, Son. So another uh, great master of the um, uh, landscape photography was jo Sir George Washington Wilson, who took pictures of many architectural monuments and natural landscapes in Scotland, England and uh, Northern Ireland. So, after many years of meticulous work with the collection carried out by our restoration department, storage department and laboratory on digitalizations of the museum exhibits, in in October last year, Rosphoto presented an exhibition project called Early British Photography, where 61 original photo prints were demonstrated. So this exhibition was an overview of the early history of British photography and some prints uh, belonging to the period from late 1830s to 1860s were demonstrated. Uh, for the exhibition's works by the masters of the golden age of the British photography, Talbot and Nicholas Henneman uh, were presented, so you see some uh, male and female portraits. So Nicholas Henneman, the co-author of The Pencil of Nature and Talbot's Cousins, John Dilvin Lelevin, uh, also Calvert Richard Jones and Scottish color typists David Octavius Hill and Robert Adamson. And special attention was paid to the works of the Welsh uh, photo artists uh, Teresa Maria Dilvin Levelin. So this, uh, the spotlight of the exposition was the earliest uh, uh, examples of the photographic art. And also the exposition featured view of Walter Scott's tomb from the Sun Pictures of Scotland. On which uh, Tal Talbot dedicated to Walter Scott who was uh, really impressed and influenced uh, by um, Walter Scott's uh, works. So 
actually the main goal was to sh demonstrate to the spectators that the early British photography was a new type of uh, fine arts. Uh, today, uh, museums, when they get prepared for an exhibition project, they try to avoid uh, offering uh, spectators and passive consumptions. And uh, visitors uh, can enjoy unique impressions from that interaction. So the early British photography used uh, artifact software, which uh, allowed to get access to uh, like uh, uh, enriched reality. So, if uh, you would zoom in the QR code uh, on your smartphone, the exhibits uh, smartphone, uh, you could uh, see the tiny details of the image. So, professionals from the digitalizations uh, could correct uh, tones and shades of the images. So the resolution and uh, details of the light shades uh, of the image were improved and increased, which allowed to develop a uh, missing image on uh, fading out uh, photographers. For visitors without smartphones, an interactive table was used. Is it possible to put the video on? No? Uh, however, despite the wide use of digital technologies in exhibition activities, Ross Photo as a museum is always focused on genuine objects and uh, uh, genuine prints uh, were shown at the exhibition and the main problem for the product was to uh, make sure they are preserved for the time uh, uh, of the exhibition. Yes. So, uh, to ensure that they can survive uh, through the time, there are uh, some approaches just to offer uh, copies with high resolutions. But the concept of the project was to show to the spectators original prints this time. And as we know, one of the main reasons for uh, aging of photo materials is the impact of light. And the first measure to protect uh, museum exhibits uh, is restricting light dependent on the light resistance. So modern international norms divide uh, photographic materials by sensitivity into three groups depending on the photographic uh, uh, emulsion. So highly sensitive, very sensitive and sensitive. So color types belong to the group of highly sensitive photomaterials. According to recommendations of Bertrand Lavedran, uh, a well uh, known uh, expert and a director of the Paris Center of uh, Preservation and Restoration. So, if uh, a genuine uh, print is exhibited uh, from 11 to 19 hours daily, so the such a print can be only exposed 30 calendar days uh, per year. But we should also think about the comfort of the viewers. So we had to find a compromise. So only uh, guided groups uh, could visit the early British photograph exposition. And there were only two tours uh, per day. And uh, the luminosity was uh, 55 to 70 lux, uh, so um, the total rate uh, for exhibiting was about 6,000 uh, lux per hour, uh, which allowed us to create comfortable conditions for viewers and uh, observe the requirements to light. Uh, for exhibitions of photo materials. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you would like to learn more about our project, feel free to log on at our site uh, rosphoto.org. Thank you so very much for your attention.